The serene landscape of Belgium is suddenly engulfed in a deadly fog as warfare takes a chilling turn. On April 22, 1915, poison gas is first used on the Western Front of World War I. In World War I, the awesome power of industrial-era weaponry is unleashed. The Germans introduce chemical warfare to the conflict by discharging 150 tons of lethal chlorine gas against French troops in Belgium during the Second Battle of Ypres in 1915. The effects are devastating, causing confusion, panic, and death among the soldiers, who have no defense against this new and horrifying weapon. This marks the first large-scale use of chemical weapons in warfare, setting a dangerous precedent for future conflicts. It has a lasting impact on the war, leading to the development of even more deadly chemical weapons by both sides. The introduction of poison gas in World War I is a dark chapter in human history, showcasing the brutal and inhumane tactics employed during the conflict. Stay tuned, we'll learn more about the development of chemical weapons and the man who leads the effort. We'll also learn about some of the types of chemical weapons used and their impacts on the war. And finally, we'll learn about a famous German soldier who is wounded in a gas attack. Don't forget to check out Today in History in my Teachers Pay Teacher store. There's a link in the description. Toxic smoke had been used occasionally in warfare since ancient times. The French had also used small amounts of tear gas in police operations before World War I. But when World War I rolls along, the Germans, under the direction of chemist Fritz Haber, begin actively developing chemical weapons right at the beginning of the war in 1914. Ironically, Haber receives the 1918 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his process for synthesizing ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen gases. He later defends his role in World War I chemical warfare by arguing that death is death, no matter how it is inflicted. And thus, he maintains, death by chemicals is no more inhumane than death by steel bullets. The Germans' first foray into the use of chemical weapons occurs when they fire some tear gas shells in France very early in the war in October 1914. But Allied troops are essentially unaffected. In January 1915, the Germans fire shells loaded with lethal xylyl bromide at Russian troops on the Eastern Front. But because of the cold temperatures, most of the gas freezes. Some casualties, however, are reported. The aforementioned gas attack during the Second Battle of Ypres on April 22, 1915, along with the subsequent uses of chlorine gas during that same battle, helped Germans gain about three miles of ground, which in the trench warfare of World War I is actually quite significant. France and Belgium immediately begin developing their own chemical weapons and gas masks. There are four main types of poison gas that are used in World War I. Tear gas, chlorine gas, phosgene gas, and mustard gas. Although odorless and colorless in its pure liquid form, impure forms of mustard gas used during the war have a mustard color and an odor similar to garlic or horseradish, hence the name mustard gas. At room temperature, it is actually generally a liquid. Its gas form, though, is heavier than air, so it settles on exposed skin and even soaks through clothing. Mustard gas is a blistering agent. It literally damages human cells within minutes of contact. Uh, but the onset of pain and other health effects are usually delayed until hours after exposure, making it particularly insidious. Mustard gas can cause permanent scarring of the skin. You can just imagine what the effects are on the eyes and the lungs. Although mustard gas gains the most notoriety and the worst reputation in World War I, phosgene is actually far more deadly. 85% of the deaths from chemical weapons in World War I are from exposure to phosgene. Only about 2 or 3% are from mustard gas. Far more men die from other devastating World War I weapons than from gas. 
Of the 8 million combat deaths in World War I, only 91,000 are from chemical weapons. In reality, the psychological effects of chemical warfare are much more devastating to the soldiers than the gas itself. German soldier Adolf Hitler survives more than one gas attack during the war. It is believed that he trims his mustache to his trademark toothbrush style so that his gas mask will seal more effectively to his face. He is temporarily blinded by a gas attack in 1918 and is recovering in an army hospital when the armistice is signed that ends the fighting. The use of these deadly chemical weapons uh, serves as a grim reminder of the horrors of war and the lengths which, to which nations will go to achieve victory. What did you find most interesting about the use of chemical weapons in World War I? Share your thoughts in the comments. Also, please be sure to like and subscribe. It really helps my channel. And you can find more videos right here from Mr. Lewis. And you can find another video right here. Thanks for watching.